Hi everyone, welcome back to another video and let me just say Merry Christmas to you all um, if you celebrate Christmas. If not, happy holidays, enjoy the break from work if you're getting it. So it's become a little bit of a tradition that we colour in The Magical Christmas. My YouTube channel has been going for, it will be three years in March, so we've done one every year in this book. We did um, The Christmas Robin. These are on my channel if you want to have a go at them yourselves. We've done the Christmas Robin. And then last year we did... Not that one. Where is it? We did the... Um, where is it? We did the Christmas Star and I can't find it. I should have marked it, shouldn't I? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, as usual. Right, there's the page we're going to do. That's the page that I've done. I wonder if it's in my... Please tell me it's not in my practice copy. I got two copies of this when I was trying to learn ink tents. I don't think I'd have put it in that copy. We're flipping, folks. We're doing a bit of a flip. There's one I started and haven't finished. I'm so sorry. The one I did when I was poorly. There it is. So we did that last year with ink tents. This was done with Black Widows. And then last year we did this one with um, ink tents. And there is some stickles. I don't know if you're picking that up. This year, I have marked the page. I want us to do this wreath. I want to have a go at this. Now... The page predominantly is going to be done with ink tents pencils. We are going to use ink tents, gorgeous, gorgeous pencils. But the background, because it's very um, tiny, and to get in these intricate details, I'm going to use the polychromos. So we may use some more polychromos to do some shading on the image. I'm not sure. So I'm just going to, very simply, I'm going to use um, two colours. So I've got um that's the one let me just check that's the right one let's come in okay all right so if i show you how i'm going to do it and then i'll go off like i traditionally do and complete things off camera because there's such a it's such a big page so i'm going to use the this is actually um the chrome oxide green and i've missed the oxide out let me put oxide in there so I don't confuse anyone there we go chrome oxide green and then we've got permanent green olive they're a really good combination together and um, so what we're going to do with this is all the swirls in the background and it's just for me anyway with shaky hands it's too intricate to get in there with my ink tents and risk it so that's what I'm doing So I'm going to, I'm not doing it as, um, I'm not going to do it as the swirls. The swirls will stay, the black lines will stay and give us some shading. What I am going to do is go in, sorry not shading, detail, is go in around objects with the darker colour and bring that out. So where I think it will be behind objects or an object has created a bit of a shadow on it I will bring this out like that so in particular I'm going to go just my way of doing it in between the leaves here and then let it fade out this is just my idea of um, how I think it will look cool so then I'm going to take the um, permanent green let me move you centralise you a little bit the permanent green olive and then I'm going to blend that in together. So it's not going to be precise in light and shadow and all the rest of it. I just want those different um, tones in there. So it looks like the greenery in the background. The majority of the picture, like I say, in the rest of it will be um, ink tents. 
we might do a little bit of shading with the prismas well the polychromas well we will so so like that so you get this um gives a really good sort of pine look um what am i trying to say wreathy look okay so like for here here for example i am just going to i'm going to take each little gap as it comes so i'm going in with the dark color there and then switch to my permanent green just so we get a variation of shading in each little gap I hope that makes sense and then we don't have to worry about trying to fill in those tiny little swirls we come around this leaf come around here a bit And then we'll switch to our permanent green. And we'll keep going with that until you get that lovely soft colour. Just so you can see the difference. Come up here. We'll fill that bit up. So that's all I'm going to do. Um, nice and easy, relaxing, pre-Christmas colouring feet, people. This is going to be a really, really easy, relaxing one. So when I you do do the um, when I do do the um, ink tents, it will be probably one or two colours, and we use the pencil, the ink in that to advantage to give us the different shades they're really clever like that and it just takes so much stress out of the page but they look so effective okay so as you can see once we've completed the swirls in the background like that the page is really going to pop out off so let's come out and have a look So if you're afraid of your ink tents, this might be a really good one for you because um, I am too, to an extent. And um, it takes a bit of practice. You do not need to press hard with ink tents. The softer you go, the better. And you can layer them because they're permanent once they're on the page. So what I'm going to do, I'll leave that there, is I'm going to go off and fill in this entire, wherever there's swirls, I will use these two colours and we're going to fill that in. Then it will take away the whiteness of the page and um, also it will make it more visible and easy for you to see when I'm colouring with you. Alright you beautiful souls, I'll see you in a second. Okay folks, so I've finally finished um, the background and I hope the image now really pops to you. Obviously I've left the centre, it is a wreath. And I've used a little bit of black Prisma just really lightly just to really deepen up some areas um, so that they pop off a little bit more and then went back over with our chrome oxide green we're gonna focus now on the pine cone <coughs> I thought we'll do this one together and I'm going to use one color so let's come in so we get I don't want to come too close because it goes blurry okay so I've got tan so we're going to start to use our ink tense pencils now. Now the way I do it, it's just the way I do it, um, is I go in um, with more pressure where I want the colour and then really lessen it off so there's almost nothing on the page because they are so intense <laughs> as per the name. Okay, so we've got some, we can see where we need the darker bits. So I am going in. not heavy handed just with more pressure where that shadow is okay and as we come out from there I'm going to lessen the pressure off and up here I'm literally hardly touching the page okay I'm going to do the same with this one 
So I'm going to cover that shadow. And I'm going to start to come out a bit lighter. And then almost not touching the page. <coughs> I hope you can see that properly. Let's do this one. We're going to do them all the same and then we will add um, some pencil over the top when, the, when it's dry. And that's the trick. You have to let it completely dry. Which is the fun with ink tents because you can do this, move on to another element, which is why I thought this page would work for us so well. Okay, I'm going to do the same with the ones that don't have the shadow on. So I'm going in deep and I'm going to start to lessen it off. So there's literally hardly anything. I'm just tickling it. I'll just do this one around the top and then I'll activate it and show you what happens. <coughs> Excuse me. knocked a book off the desk. I've got a great big barrel of tea to stop me coughing all over you. Just finish this little bit at the top here. Okay, there we go. So, I've got an old scraggy cloth here so that I can wipe my brush off if I get too much ink on it. So I'm going to put that at the side of the page so you can see. I'll move that out of the way. I've got my Kurataki brush, um, which the wonderful Cheryl sent me in that parcel. I love using it. It's so fine. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, um, I'm going to start from the very top where there's hardly anything on it and pull the ink down to where I want it darkest. And you'll see the magic happen. Just wiping my cloth, if I feel there's too much ink. There we go. And then we can just move that about. So you need hardly anything to get the, um, the colour you want. Yeah. Um, it's really important to swatch these because when they're dry they look completely different as you'll see. So that's gone from what looks like a brown to a very ochre colour. But they are the most magical pencils. And if you've got patience, I mean you might be one of those lucky ones that can, you know, have practiced with them a lot more than I have and can do these great blends with them. But I like to go back in because that's the magic of them. I like to let it dry and go back in and then if I'm going to use a different colour, do it then. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's how we're going to do our pine cones, and then we will let them dry. And that's it. Just tan. And you'll get that nice, when it dries, it'll, you'll see that variant even more. So let me go off and do the three pine cones, and then we will meet back up, and we'll do the other ink tense bits in parts. Before, oh, I've missed background swirls. I knew I would. <laughs> we'll meet back up and we'll do all the other elements. Okay, see you in a sec. Okay, so the pine cones are partially done. Obviously we're going to go back over them, but we've got the colour. I just thought I'd show you that while you use very limited water, I don't know if you can see, let me just move that. 
there is no bleed through whatsoever. I love this image, so I'm really glad. Okay, so next element in ink tents we are going to do is these leaves coming up here, round here, these little ones. So any ones that look like that, that's what we're going to do. So let's focus on these ones. Um, we'll come in, not out. There we go. And same as before, we're going to use beach green. And at the base of the leaf, I'm going in Um, quite deep with the colour and then I literally as we did before I'm just touching the page just so that we get a nice variant of colour. Now I find it easier to do this some people will put ink tents um, quite intensely down here and then drag it up but I feel that I've got more control doing it this way so let's activate that I'll get my cloth ready get my brush um, and I'm coming from our palest bit. And then we'll start to get that intense green here. Which if I just dab my brush off then I can pull that out. There we go. And it dries such a beautiful colour. So again we'll do this one. We'll have bit more intense down here and up this side and then we'll just literally glide the pencil on the paper just so we get a hint of colour. Okay, and let's activate that one. we can pull that intense colour up and just let it fade in and I just like I say I just feel I have a little bit more control doing it with this in this manner so one more more colour at the base and then as you come up just touch the page <coughs> And then we'll activate it. Magic, aren't they? They really are. Okay, just clean my brush off. There we go. Okay, so your project now, if you're following along on my project, that's come out, is to complete all these long leaves in that way. And those ones I'm going to do. And we'll come back and we'll do the next element. See you in a second. Okay, I've done all those um, those leaves. <laughs> right, we're going to inject some colour. We're going to try the poinsettia. This is the scary bit for me because um, it's a very bright colour. So I, I again, I'm going to do layering. Um, we will do more than one layer on this with ink tents, um, but I'm just going to get the base layer down first. So we're going to use the gorgeous cherry, and it is lovely. I'm going to be quite cautious with it because it is very, very bright and very intense. So I'm going to use a couple of layers, um, and I'm going to do the same technique as I did before. I'm going to put it where I want it more intense and where... Um, I'm going to lessen it out where I want it lighter. So these, like these leaves, we've got that beautiful fade out and it just, it's just so magical, these pencils. And okay, I can see, before I go in there, a tiny bit of background. And as I've gone along, I found all the bits that I'm missing. Um, because with Liz's pages, it can, they can be quite challenging to find all the elements. Um, this is this page is a bit clearer but some of them are, are quite difficult. Right, let's stop procrastinating, procrastinating even, 
and let's get on with it. So I'm going in intense here because it's behind this leaf and round here okay and we'll make this side I think a little deeper and up the centre okay now we'll start to lessen off that pressure Make sure that's nice and deep. And trust me, wait till you see it. It's um, well, if you know ink tense, you'll know that the just the intense, beautiful colour that they give off. So I don't feel that there is any need to go in um, heavy-handed to start with because they um, are permanent when they are when they've been activated. There is no need to um, no need to go in and, in my opinion, in my opinion, I mean, there's some great people out there that can do ink tense work, but um, in my opinion, for me anyway, um, being a little more cautious and anxious about my colouring, um, I like to do it this way, and then it for me it lessens any mistakes. So as usual, I'm going in where I've got the palest part of the leaf and then we'll pull that through, just focus on those pale bits to start with. I found actually while I was doing this that if I use my thumb to wipe my brush off it's st it stops the brush drying out okay let's get that intensity going let's be brave folks look at that isn't it incredible and we'll just push that out into the faded out part okay There we go. Obviously that's not finished. Um, this one is on top, so I'm not going to put down, so it's not going to be as, an in, as, as intense at the minute. And we are going to use another colour when we go over this. Hang on, let me move you down, there you go. We are going to use another colour when we go over this, a deeper red for our darker spots so I'm just being um, it's just my way of I don't know um, because I've gained an awful lot of confidence with my colouring because of you guys on here but um, I still sometimes get really anxious about certain things I don't know why and, and this time of year is particularly bad I love Christmas but it can be a really sad time and make you very anxious and quite recently Friday actually a week ago today um, I found out that a friend that um, I hadn't seen for a long time we, we were friends on Facebook but she was my best friend at one point for years and our children grew up together and they still saw each other she passed away um, really suddenly and it's really hit me hard and um, that triggers those kind of things trigger all sorts of memories and things you can't control things you can't I don't know just feelings that you can't control and then kicks off anxiety and you know I've got a lot to look forward to and I'm very thankful for um, but it's hard and it's hard I do understand you know with the children I work with and everything how 
horrible Christmas can be for some people, families, you know, and losing people and things. It's cruel. It's really cruel. So, right, this leaf behind, I'm sorry, um, went off on a bit of a tangent, but if I can't share with you guys, who can I share with? So we've got this leaf which is behind, so we're going to go, I'm going to go in and be a bit brave. So I just want you to know that I am with you guys, whether you are happy and loving Christmas or you're finding it difficult and challenging. I do understand. And my thoughts and prayers go out to everybody that is struggling. Okay, we're going to do this one and then um, I'll go off and... So we're gonna, I'm going to do really intense here. I'm going to be really brave. Look where those shadows are going to be because we'll be going over that so where we've got those sketch lines that's where our shadows are going to be and because it's behind other leaves uh, and then I'm going to start to let it fade off yeah so I'm, that's it I'm done sorry for being all maudly Maud, maudling maud Morbid? Maudling? There is a word, isn't there? Maudling? Anyway, um, <laughs> I'm back to normal now. I just wanted to share that with you. Okay, let's activate those. So let's do this one at the top here. And I'm going to use my thumb so it doesn't dry my brush out. Let's get that colour spread, that pale bit. And then we're going to move into this intense gorgeousness. Look at that. It's just incredible to watch. That change. I love it. Just make sure it's all activated. And that's the other thing I was going to say to you. Um, if you don't activate all of the ink Obviously it's not going to be waterproof, but also what I did find was that um, it's actually quite hard to lay pencils over the top if it's not activated. So just just um, something to be aware of there. There we go. And if you have a decent water brush some of the cheaper ones will put out a lot of water, so if you find that your ink tents are going through the page, that will be why. Uh, it's not the pencils themselves, it will be the, the amount of water that's coming out of the brush. There we go. Let's just check the reverse side. And make sure that there is nothing. Look, there's nothing. Okay, perfect. So, um, I am going to come out so you can see the page as it's coming on. I'm going to go off and finish the poinsettia, then I'm going to let the page dry. And then, because I have to do these little cards for you. Did I do it? No, I didn't. We're going to then come and look at this bow. So we've got the colour in the page so that we can see um, what other colours we want to add. And, yeah, all those, all that kind of jazz. All right, my lovely, lovely friends, um, I will finish the poinsettia, let it completely dry everything, and then we will come back and do the bow. See you in a sec. Okay, so I finished the poinsettia. It, it's not quite dry. I want to make sure it's completely bone dry before we move on, um, before we do any colouring over it. That's the key to it working, really. Okay. I've chosen iris blue for this gorgeous bow. Um, just because I've got the traditional greens and we're going to have um, lots of greens in there obviously um, and I really want it to stand out because it's so beautiful so we're going in with iris blue and I'm going to have to be very brave <coughs> oh, I don't know where to start okay we're going to start here now this is the bit that's coming out of the knot so that's going to be dark Again, as I've done with the other ones, I'm I'm going to layer it. I'm going to make the bottom of this because this is again a very intense colour. 
it looks pale and pastel -y when you put it down, but my goodness. It's got some punch, people. We're going to go around this leaf. Bring that down. And behind here. And around these leaves. Careful that I don't go over it. And this is where I'm going to start to fade it out. So at the top of this, um, behind there, at the top of the bow, it's going to be it's at its lightest. And then, oh, I'm, I do apologise. Um, I got some Amazon Basic gel pens. Oh my goodness, they were like six pound for a whole set of them. I can't remember how many. Of them. I'm looking at them now. Um, and they come in. The, they came with a, a stand for you to put them in, and they work like a dream. So I'll show you one of them in here. So I think I'm going to go over these um, little like filigree bits, whatever they are, with um, silver gel pen. Um, they're really, really good for a basic pen, uh, gel pen. Um, I'm really, really impressed. So they've got neons, glitter, plain ones, and it's the plain ones that I wanted, but they just run so well. Okay, so I'm going to leave it like that. Let's activate that and see what happens. Okay, so make sure my brush has got enough water on it. Water's flowing, which it is. And we're going in, right, this bit's light. So then we'll go in. And we want it darker. Okay, my brush is a little wet now. So I'm just going to dry it off on the cloth. Because I don't want bleed through onto that gorgeous page behind. See how it's got quite wet. Look at that intensity, isn't it gorgeous? <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, clean my brush off because this bit's paler. And I don't want to drag that really intense blue in there. I do want a bit of blue in there, so I don't know what's happened there. But like I say, we're layering, so we can go back in. That looks dreadful. <coughs> and where my brush was wet, like I've got a bit of bleed through. <coughs> Excuse me a minute. So I'll have to leave that to dry completely, that bit. We will be putting more in there. <laughs> okay, this bit with our, still with our iris blue. I'm going to make this bit dark. And this bit. Fade that out. Okay, so I want this bit to be like the brightest bit here. So I'm going to put my blue in and then I'm going to really fade it out like we did with the leaves. So I'm going to put colour down but barely touching. I don't think I've got any colour on that bit. But it's okay, we can go back in. Okay, let's activate this. All right. Get 
the start bit. And clean my brush off and just pull out that light colour. There we go. Okay. There we are. That looks cool. Don't hover too much in one spot. Yes, I think it's going to be okay. I've got that blue spot there on my brush was really wet, but that's okay. We can, I can cope with that. <coughs> Let's keep going. This is why I find it scary, folks. I find it scary. Okay, this get, this bit is going to be really dark in there. And then I'm lightly, not as light as I did here, but just lightly putting that blue in just so it does fade out as it comes towards the edge. Okay. Let's go in again. And I like to do it section by section like this, where I'm just colouring one bit and then moving moving on. There we go. Gosh, it's such a beautiful colour. There we are. And then the next bit. So this bit will be dark in here. And I'm going to make this at the back here and be darker and in and around these flowers, no, well, these petals, leaves, sorry. So I'm going to have to be careful around there and in here. It's going to be quite intense. And here and a little bit there. And then we'll just fade it out there. Or you can't say, oh, I thought I'd gone off camera. Fade it out there. We'll fade in here. Okay. Let's do the activation bit. So again, doing all the pale bits first, so I don't get too much ink on my brush. Okay. Now we can activate the intense bits. There we go. Oh my goodness, sorry about the sniffing. This, um, that virus thing that I had a few weeks ago, gosh, really took its toll on me. And, uh, still recovering. There we are. What do you think? That bit's drying off a little bit. It's still wet, so I'm not even going to attempt to, um, go over that yet. So let's try the knot. So we're going to have dark and intense here. And then we're going to let it fade out. There we go. Right. We'll do the pale bit first. And we'll bring it then we'll Activate that brightness. There we go. Let's clean my brush off. There we go. Again, 
more confident again now. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> oh my goodness. There. So there's quite a lot of it. So um oh, we've got a little bit of ribbon down here as well, look. So I'm gonna do that intense and let it fade out. I think you kind of get the picture, it's just where you where I'm going in with the dark. I'm gonna make this edge darker. Fade it out. Okay, let's get that going. So the picture's really starting to come together. Um, and that's what's magical about Liz's work. I wish she'd do more books. Okay, let's get that intensity out there. Um, she's got um, is it a Bon Voyage book, um, which you can't get anymore. I don't know why. Um, I'd love that book, but you can't get it, which is really sad. And then there was a, a French one, or I think that was Bon Voyage. Then there was, she did one about um, the UK. Yeah, I'd love that, but you, can't, you just can't get them. I have searched for them, but you can't get hold of them, which is really sad. I don't know why she stopped doing books, but um, they're so lovely. So you can get this one and you can get Magical Journey and Magical City still, but um, the other ones, yeah, just seem to have gone out of print, which is a real shame. Okay, let's do this one. Right, I'm going to make this bit dark now. So we're going to come out of there, quite dark, and bring that up around here this will be our dark bit and then that one we're going to make the lighter bit and along that edge Now I'm gonna now I'm gonna fade it out. So just tiny bit of colour. There we go. All right, let's do our pale bits as usual. Now I've just gone into that, so I'm going to have to let it activate. I'll just clean my brush off. Okay, pale bits. And again, I've gone into the dark. <laughs> it's a skill, people. I have this skill where I mess things up. <laughs> it's taken 48 years of practice, you know. Sorry I'm not chatting much, it's um it's quite intimidating. I find sometimes working with ink tents. Because if you get it wrong, the beauty of it is the layering, but if you get it wrong, that's it. There's no um there's no coming back. But we're getting there, aren't we? Look, it's gonna be okay. I just need to fix that bit when it's dry. Okay, right, we're gonna have um dark down the bottom here, so we're going to have that darker, definitely around the bottom of this bit, and coming out of that bow bit there, 
Now this is on top of that holly leaf, so I can go lighter there. So we're just going to have a bit of intensity around the bottom. And then we are going to fade it out. And if all else fails, we have got polychromos, which we can colour over the top. So, shouldn't really be panicking. <coughs> okay, let's get our light bits. I think it's just me having a bit of a, a downer time on myself, so just ignore me. <laughs> Most people do. <laughs> Get that intense, beautiful colour going. Oh, look at that. So pretty. Bring that out. There we go. Beautiful. That all activated there. There we go. Right. Let me see. Yeah, just, well, I've got a couple of patches, and that's because my own fault, because I've gone back over it. But hopefully, because it's so light, it will dry to almost non-existent. We'll have a look in a bit. When it's fully drying, we'll have a look. Um, but it will be fine. Okay, so, again, intense here. And then fade it out. Intense up in this corner where it's folded over and behind that ribbon, that fold there. And then this bit's going to be darker. I'm going to do the bottom bit on here darker. Minding our holly leaf. Can you? You couldn't see. I'm so sorry. Minding our holly leaf. This bit then we're going to fade out. <coughs> I'm going to have this side dark. I'm sorry, this will be the longest part of the video um, without cutting. I hope that's okay. I just want to make sure that if you're following along, you know where I've put, where I've chosen to put the lights and the darks. Okay, now we're going to fade out. So. Let's try that. Okay, let's do this one. Okay, there's a, quite a bit of pale that I want to keep on this one. So let's do that first. And we can pull out any bits that we want a little bit more intense. Carefully round that leaf. There we go. And this bit. You can do it the other way around, uh, from dark to light, like I said earlier, but um, I just feel more in control doing the pale first. I know I'm repeating myself, sorry. There we are. I think we've done the ribbon, folks. <coughs> Obviously, I need to do that bit. Um, 
but again I'm not going to touch it until it's dry. So if we flip my little card, we're going back to our cherry red that we used for the poinsettia. And, um, or cherry, it's just cherry. Now wherever we see the um, holly, there's three berries usually on it, three or four or whatever, and we're going to use the cherry to colour those in. So, I'm going to go in quite intense on one side. And then we'll fade it out. Not um, as softly as we've done the bow. And we are going to use another colour, don't forget, when we use the reds. So, it doesn't have to be perfect, because we're going to go over it. Alright, so that's how I'm going to do the berries. Let's activate this. It's ended up being like one colour, but um, it's okay because we're going to use a really dark red later on. There we go. So, um, then what have we got? We've got, just make sure my brush is clean, we've got this gorgeous one which is Sicilian Yellow. Now if we come out, um, oh, I don't know if you can see enough, let's come out a minute just so I can show you something. Um, on the holly, wherever the holly is, there's berries that we're going to do as red. But the rest of the berries I'm going to do as if they were um, mistletoe berries. So we are going to use Sicilian Yellow. Oh, let's come in and have a look so I can try and show you a bit that so this is a good example. So here, where are, where did I sit on camera just a second ago? Here, this bit, that, those berries are attached to the holly. These ones have got their own little sprigs. So we're going to use Sicilian yellow. Here it is. And just like we've done those berries up there, I'm going to colour one edge. And I don't want this too intense. So. Um, I'm just going to colour one side. I'm going to pick a side that I want darkest and colour. They're the holly berries, so they're going to be red. Can you see that colour? There you go. And then I'm going to use, um, later on, I'll use a bit of white Prisma and just soften up one edge. Like that. that will be holly berries. We go. Oh, and that's one. Okay. I'll just check my brush is cleaner and running, and it is. So I'm just going to pick up a bit of that yellow. There we go. It's quite hard to do these little tiny bits. That's why I'll go back in with some white Prisma and just soften any edges that I've got too much colour on. It will come together, folks, trust me. If you're thinking, oh God, Lucy, that looks rubbish right now. It will come together, I promise. And I do have a practice book for this one, like I said earlier, because um, I was trying to learn ink tense. So I have practiced the page, as usual, and it does look really cool. Okay, so new project. Anywhere there's holly, so we've got those berries there, those berries there. Let's have a look. Where else might there be? Is there any other? There. There's a couple of little holly berries there. Um, so whenever we've got like this vine with berries on, I'm going to do those as um, mistletoe. Just because. Just because. <laughs> All right. So, what I'm going to do is go off and do all those berries, um, lots and lots of berries. 
when this is completely dry I'm going to put a little bit more colour in there not too much a little bit more colour and then we'll meet back up and do another element <laughs> see you in a second okay so I've <coughs> oh, excuse me so I've done all the berries and I've kept the mistletoe down here and dotted the red ones about to lift the colour and it just seemed to make more sense to me I don't know why so we're going to do a bit of polychromos work now. We need to look at the pine cones here. And I've just got two colours because we've got this wonderful gradient going on from the, I think it was tan, was it, that we used? Uh, yeah, from the tan. Let's move in so you can see. So I've got walnut brown and raw amber. And possibly a little bit of my white prisma. Got to love a white prisma. All right. So taking the walnut brown, I'm going to go in where the um, little seed pods of the cone overlap and make that really dark in there. This was just my practice one. Just wanted to make sure that the colours work before I came on. Okay, so this is our walnut brown. And then we're going with the raw umber, which blends beautifully into that tan. And we're going to leave the tips in that soft tan colour. Okay, we can take the white prisma and just tone that down even more if we need to. There we go just want that contrast so I've probably put a little bit too much of the walnut in that one so I'll be a little bit more cautious on another one so here's the walnut so I just really want to use that as shadow just to give this um, give the effect that they're laying behind so then in with our raw amber I just really want to blend that into that lovely soft tan. There. And then we get a really nice um, pine cone look. Pretty cool. Okay, and then raw amber. like that. Okay, just going to do another one with you. Then we'll move to another cone so I can show you that one. Okay, raw amber. Nice and simple folks. Like I said, a stress-free page. Okay, so that's how we're going to do that pine cone. Let's have a look at this one which has got a different shape to it. The principle is still the same, so I'm going to go in with the walnut and make that dark in there and then we're just going to come in with our raw umber, pull that into the tan. There we are, and in here. So just wherever they overlap is where I'll put the walnut in and then let the raw umber fade out. Ah, so that's that one and then this one is pretty sort of self-explanatory. We're going in with the walnut where our shading is. Just again at the side, you know, wherever it joins, wherever it falls underneath or behind and then our raw umber and let that fade into that tan. So we get that, um, we can just use the ink tents as our highlight and gradient. So clever. Okay, that ribbon's still wet, so I can't do that yet. I expect my berries are still, so we could concentrate, go back to our poinsettia. There we go. So 
cover up those lines with the walnut. Get that nice and dark and rich in there. And then, <coughs> excuse me, use the raw rumber to blend it out. There. It's going to look so effective. So I'm going to go off again and I'm going to do the pine cones. If I focus on one element instead of doing too many, then um, I can. I don't feel so overwhelmed when I come off camera that I've got all these different elements to do. And then we'll come back and we'll put the rich colour back in the poinsettia and we can look at the berries and the bow because hopefully they'll be dry. All right, my lovely people, I'll see you in a sec. Okay, so I've completed the pine cones and I think they look really effective, or they will do when we've, when all this is complete. So we need to come back to our poinsettia now it's completely dry. <coughs> And we're going to use the gorgeous Shiraz. So what I'm going to do is pick out the places that I want it to be really dark. Like this leaf is behind, this one's behind, etc. So if we... Let me just come in a bit more. There we go. I'll put that there for a minute. If we start with this one, because we've got the hatch shadowing on there. So if we put the Shiraz in, bearing in mind it is incredibly deep colour. Very beautiful, but very deep, rich colour. Okay. So we've got the Shiraz there. Let's activate. Um, I hope this comes off. <laughs> I'm going out tonight. It's my daughter-in-law's, well, my daughter-in-law to bees was it was her birthday and we're going for a meal so I really hope that um, I don't have to turn up with Shiraz coloured thumb okay we're just going to bring that out make sure it's activated okay now it will look cool, so you have to trust me, but we'll do some pencil work over the top. So we'll put the Shiraz in here, behind this one as we talked about. Can you see? Yeah, if I get my thumb out of the way. Okay, let's activate that. Push that into the other colour. There we go. So we've got a nice, some nice deep area. Let me just show you that reverse page again. So that blue that came through is all but disappeared. There's one little tiny patch there. So I'm quite pleased about that. But it's just a tale of caution for you to. Um, just be aware of how much water you're putting on your page. Just making sure that's activated. There was a few spots that weren't. Okay, we're going to do this one here. Let's move you over. All right. So we're going to do this one here because it's behind. This one. Okay. And then while we wait for that to dry so we can go back in again. I've got brushes gone dry. There we go. Um, we're going to do some pencil work on the berries. There we go, got a bit of water going now. My brush had dried up. There we are. There we go. That's better. Okay. 
Right, and I want um, a little bit of Shiraz just around this holly leaf. Not much, just a little bit. There we go. It's beginning to come alive, come to life, people. We're going to let that dry. Okay, now, berries. So I did some down here for the holly. So we are going to use, let's come up and do a big one so you can see. These ones. We're going to use deep red and kaput mortem. Gorgeous colours. Now you don't need much of the kaput mortem, but it was the closest match I could find to our poinsettia here. Um, because they're too little and I'm too shaky, I'm not going to use the ink tents. So I'm just going to give a deep edge to the bottom of our berry. You don't need much of this, it's literally for shadow. And then I'm going in with deep red over that. And we get this gorgeous deep holly berry. There we go, we'll do this one. So this is underneath, so we need a bit of shadow there. And don't be tempted to put too much down, otherwise it will be too dark. There we go. And then the same, this one's underneath, so we'll put a little bit of that there. And then our deep red. and let that go into that red that we put underneath. That's quite cool, isn't it? Okay, so we'll start to see the real definition and things really beginning to come together. Um, so if we go down here to our little mistletoe berries, we've got one single colour, which is green gold. And I'm going to pick a darker edge where we put the um, initially put the ink tents, and I'm just going to enhance that colour a little bit. I don't want it too much, just want... I just want an edge that's a bit darker. And then fade that into that gorgeous yellow. Okay, we can... let me try... Um, if I can find it. Where is it? I'm looking for my Prisma White. There it is. We can try mixing that with a bit of the white. So we've already got that um, Sicilian yellow under it. But I want them to just look a little bit more translucent. So we keep that subtleness, but we've just got some shading there. And that green gold will give us the nice, uh, add a little bit of tone with that Sicilian yellow, as opposed to just sort of pastels and no interest. Right. Um, we need to address the bow. So I think I'm going to go back in with, if I can find it, um, hang on, bear with me. I don't think it's that one. I think it's this one. Yeah. So I'm going to go back in with the iris blue and I'm just going to deepen up some areas. So I'm just going back in where I want it dark.
Now those of you that are brave enough, you could have done this on the first sitting, but I'm not, I'm just not brave enough. Okay, so let's make sure there's no red on that, and then we're gonna activate that. We can get such an intense blue out of this that it seems a shame to waste it. So, go in and pull that out. That's better. And um, back around here. Although I did manage to get quite an intense bit of blue there the first time round, but. Just really want that contrast going on. <clears throat> okay. And this is the way I do it, so I mean, it just take a little bit longer, but I think it's worth it because um, A, it's relaxing. You don't have to worry about um, what colour you're choosing and B you know then um, how intense you want it without going too much if that makes sense to anyone in the world <laughs> okay let's redo that bit so I'm going in there so we've got but much better blue there going on and then we're going to get this really intense shock of blue that's better Okay, much better. Let's clean off my brush. We are going to put just put I'm just gonna put a little bit more colour in here. Just because we've made that a little bit more intense. This needs some more blue. Okay. Let's do that. Right, so I'm not going to make you sit and watch while I do the whole bow. I'm just going to go back over where I went and deepen up the colour. Okay. There. We've got a much better contrast going on now. I'm happier with that. Let's make sure it's all activated. There we go. All right, so I am going to go off and do all the berries, including the mistletoe, and I'm going to re-intensify the bow. Then I'm going to come back and look at the holly leaves. See you in a sec. Okay, berries complete. We're so nearly there, the page is really coming together. So I think what we'll do next is have a look at, um, <coughs> excuse me, fill in the holly, the holly leaves, and... Um, and then we'll take it from there. There's a lot of green on here, so we have to try and find different greens. So I'm gonna we're gonna focus on these big holly leaves at the top here because they're easier for us to focus in on. She says, I'm just gonna have to tip you. There you go. Um, so we're gonna look at these holly leaves. And we're gonna use light olive. And same as we did before, I'm gonna go deep at the bottom where the shading is around our berries so we get enough colour in there and we'll come in here because this is behind and in here this little dip 
I'm going to go darker up the centre and bring it out to there. Yeah, so the challenge is finding all these different greens that we need. I'm just going to go a little bit there. Okay, let's try that. I may have put too much on, but we'll see. All right, so we'll go in with our light places first. And as obviously, as you'll see from the page, as the ink tense dries, it um, actually has a different colour to what it looks like when it's wet, like most paints do, really. I'm just bigging them up. <laughs> okay. Let's activate this part. Oh, it did come off my hand, by the way. It's the next morning now. Well, I say the next morning, I was colouring it like, I think it was four, five, six o'clock by the time I actually went to bed this morning. There we go. Okay. So, we're going to do the same with the other one. I'm quite pleased with that, actually, that effect. So, this one is, we're going to make it darker in the centre. We're going to come out just to enhance those those the spiky bits on the leaves. And then we're going to look at colouring that bow. Bit of polychromos. Right, we do need some colour around here, Lucy. Just light colour. Okay. Let's get some of that light colour in and going. Okay. Oops. Sorry. I'll tell you, there is nothing better for grief and anxiety and um, a bit of colouring with friends. It's done me the world of good, so thank you for sticking with me if you're still here. <coughs> there we go. Holly leaves. I really like them. We'll see how they dry. So I'm going to go off and do... No, we're not. We're going to do the bow together before I go off. So I've got these colours, just to, I just want to smooth out that ink tense look. So I've got dark indigo for the really dark spots, like I did the black round the little tiny bit of black in the flower, just to give it some real depth. Um, cobalt blue and light ultramarine, gorgeous colours. Okay, so in here, behind here I really want to darken that up because that is where that tucks behind that other one so I'm just going to put that dark indigo in there and gently bring that out now I certainly do not want to um, destroy that iris blue so we're not doing a lot on here we're just I'm just going to smooth out the colors so now I'm going to go in with the cobalt blue and just bring that into that iris. It matches really well. Just gently. You might not need to do this stage if you've been brave enough to do your ink tents really dark. You might not need to do this bit. Okay, we can put, we can be brave and put some indigo around here too. <coughs> just take your time. But I think what I might do is just a soft, subtle pan pastel background on here. I don't know what colour yet. But apart from the fact that I've gone over the lines, You can really start to see that 
that contrast there, the shadow. Get back in with our cobalt blue. And draw that indigo in. And it's this um, contrast that really brings the page out and makes it come to life. As I'm sure you'll see by the pine cones, they look completely different when we've had a bit, added a bit of um, pencil detail. There we go. Now we're going to go in with the light ultramarine. And that will just help to blend all that together. and pull it into that really light iris bit that we did. So I'm, not, I'm hardly touching it. And the idea was I just wanted to smooth out the ink tents because it can, can um, where it sort of sinks into the tooth of the paper because this is not watercolour paper. It can sometimes look a bit grainy. Like if you look at our poinsettia, it can look a bit grainy. So I'm just, the idea of this is just to smooth that graininess out and to give it obviously that deep contrast where I wanted it. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. I don't want to obliterate our ink tents. Okay, let's have a look at the knot on the bow. Well, we decided that this side was going to be our darkest, so we're going with that indigo. Can you see those colours? There we go. Indigo. And cobalt blue. Now you could do this with your ink tents, absolutely, because there is, um, what is there, what's the darkest, they've got a deep indigo in the ink tents. Um, but I'm not brave enough to have got this far on a page and then mess it up. So, there we are. <laughs> but you could, the colours are there to do it with on the ink tents. It's just having the confidence, I think. Okay, one little knot. Um, right, let's have a look at this bit down here. This should be really dark, so we're going in with our indigo there. That's really shadowed by that other piece of ribbon. Then we're going to go in with our cobalt blue. I think you get the picture. <clears throat> so everywhere that is really dark, I'm going to put the indigo. We might not need it, like I'll show you on this bit in a minute. We might not need it there. And then our light ultramarine. There we go. And you can see already it's starting to really pop and come to life. So I'm um, just going to smooth that out, that shade out a little bit more. Add a bit more of that cobalt blue. That way we can really show off the iris blue from the set. Isn't that lovely? Okay, so let's have a look at the, which bit did we say? this bit didn't we underneath here let's see if we need to add the indigo there we might under there but let's just use the cobalt blue and see what happens soften it up and then our light ultramarine Now, 
<clears throat> in this little corner we can put some indigo. We'll just not heavily, but just an indication that it that's over the top of that. Down here, I'm sorry, I'll try and hold my pencil so you can see. I know my thumb gets in the way. It's because of pain and I, I hold my pencil in all sorts of different ways. But I know that's not helpful on camera. So we'll just put a bit of that indigo in here where it's darkest. There we go. Can you see the difference between this and this? It's completely different, isn't it? But I am going to because I really like it. Put the indigo around there too. I just like how it makes it pop off the page a little bit more. You don't need too much of it, but it just really helps to shift that colour. Okay, so we've got holly leaves to do. Now, we are now going to have a look at our poinsettia here. Got another one here. Yes, sorry, I haven't written the other one on there. Deep red and... Oh, no, that is deep red. What have I picked up then? Oh, dear. Yeah, I don't need that one. Okay. So, poinsettia. Now, we're going to use our... Um, I picked up the wrong one. It's a good job I check, isn't it, before I start. Um, we've got the wrong colours. That's not deep red, it's dark red. Is that right? Nope. Okay, now I've got the right pencils. <laughs> Excuse me, tip, sip of tea. Right, let's have a look at this dark one here. So I don't like the granulation um, on this picture in particular. I do like it on other ones, but... Not this one. So we're going in with Kaput Mortem, which is our dark one. And we are going to help out that dark red that we put down as our shadow. Sorry, I tried to keep my thumb out of the way. Habit that I just switch when I get uncomfortable. Okay, then we're going to go in with this gorgeous deep red. Now, we might want a bit of contrast even more, but let's just try this first. So, going back over that Kaput Mortem, because we've used that as our shadow. Let's get those edges with this deep, excuse me, hiccup, with this deep red, because um, that colour will change completely where there's very little colour and we'll get that shock of bright red. There we go. I'm going to try and fade it into that lighter edge there. Big difference, huh? Now again, you could do this with your um, with your ink tents, there's certainly the colour range there to do it. We've got 72 colours to play with, but like I say, um, I don't want to mess the paper up. I keep going back in with layers of water, and um, I'm not confident. I will have to keep practising. Um, I'm sure I can, it's just the way I'm feeling at the moment and it will be fine. So we are going to really brighten up, look at this gorgeous colour. Do lightly on that fold over where it's folded over. 
Okay, now I'm going to start to fade it into that um, ink tents, the very light ink tents that we put down. And you're probably thinking, well, why go to all the bother with the ink tents, Lucy, if you're just going to colour over it? But as I said before, when you colour, um, when you put colour underneath, it helps with Liz's work to plan the page. It changes the consistency of the paper to make it easier to colour on. You don't have to work so hard. Um, yeah, there's a number of benefits. But also, we are going to, like those leaves, I'm not going to touch those. I like the way they came out. So I'm just going to leave them. Leaf them. <laughs> Sorry. I'm just I'm just lightly going in now and blend it into that. So that's all I'm gonna do. That's quite cool. We might put um a little bit of let me have a look. I don't want to mess it up, but let's have a look and put in this one, what colour's that? Mm, might be too bright. Let's try this one. What colour's this? Um, dark cadmium orange. Let's just try that before I write it down. Just to lift those tips a little bit because poinsettias aren't just red, are they? That's quite nice. Right, let's write that down. So this is, I've got a new purple pen, <coughs> um, dark cad orange, and that is 115, okay, so we're going to put that over the tips of those leaves where we have the lightest bit. Fade that into that ink tents because I like it better. And there's no harm in changing your work up. There we go, we've got like a fiery red going on. I really like that, that's cool. There. What do you think? I think that really helps. And then each petal will look different rather than so uniform. There we go. So that's the colours for that. Okay, I think I've got enough to work on. I've got all the holly leaves to do. I've got to finish the ribbon and come back when the poinsettia is done. Actually, I think we had a little, we did. Sicilian ye yellow. I'm going to give myself an, a work overload, aren't I? I am just going to go in the centre with Sicilian yellow. We'll come back and put that green gold in it when it's dry. Let's just do that. Where's my brush? I tried to... Oh, goodness me, Lucy. Okay. There we go. All right, lovelies. I think we have got more than enough, or I've got more than enough to get on with to show you how it comes out. Um, so sorry about the wobble. Please stop. Um, finish the ribbon. I need to get the holly leaves done and see what they're like when they're dry if they need a bit of pencil work. Then we've got these little leaves down here. I, I've not decided what colour to do those. These I'm going to do very pale, I think. Pale, like a earth green and grey. And we'll just work from there. Alright, I'll see you in a second folks. Okay, here we are. What a difference, hey folks. It looks like it's really getting there now. So I took um, a little bit of juniper green and went over my holly leaves for some shading. So let's go and do that. Here we are. Didn't like that, did it? So I just did that one, just to show you what it looks like. So a bit of juniper green, going in where I want it dark, the usual story. I'm going to bring it out towards those little spikes to emphasise that. Gently fade it into that ink tense pencil we used.
just there's a little bit of interest on it like that and you can really deepen up the center if you want you know really darken that up and each leaf that way then will will look completely different now I think that I'm going to make though I don't know actually we'll see anyway earlier I was talking to you about the Amazon basic um, gel pens this is what they look like they I will put them in a link down below and they come in this stand I don't know if I can show you without tipping them all out hang on we'll come out a bit so they came with this stand can you see that sorry if it's a bit blurry Let's come back out come out a little bit further there we go they come like that You've got plain colours, metallic colours, glittery colours and fluorescence. I wasn't expecting the stand. I think I paid £6 something for them. Really cheap. But oh my goodness. So because they are so juicy, you do have the ability to blend. So I'm going to add a bit of sparkle to this page. Um, where's that dark blue? Sorry, I've just noticed... the edge of that bow okay we're going to add a bit of sparkle so I've taken the bronze metallic one and the lighter gold one out of this set so if you've got whatever set you've got if they're juicy enough they will blend and I want to make these little round leaves sort of metallic-y so I'm going to take the bronze colour one and you might have to do a couple of layers let's do the small one first and I'm going to do the base I know it will look awful make sure that edge is wet then I'm going to come in quickly with the other one fill that edge in and then what I'm going to do is go back let's leave the lids off for a minute Lucy so that you've got quick access <laughs> come in a bit shall I come in a bit more we'll do another one together and then oh that's the wrong colour Oh, that's okay and then just sort of roughly little circles blend that in then you don't get a harsh line and they kind of blend right that's so clever all right so if i lift this up there's a lot of wax on there a lot of shine but let's let that dry they look incredible so let's do this big one so i'm just going to do a rough edge because I don't want it neat and tidy because that's going to help us blend it. Then I'm going to switch to my lighter gold. Get that edge done while it's wet. We'll go back in with our dark. And then we'll fill the top up. Look how well they work. Can you see that? They're incredible. I'm so impressed. I'm going to stuff them on my wish list so that um, I can get some more. So what we'll have when it's dry is this gold toned, when it dries, this gold tone. Are you still in shot? Yeah. This gold beautiful tone of and shimmer. Okay, let's get that gold in quick. A bit like blending alcohol markers. Okay, that's done it really nicely that time. So I'm just going to go back in, fill up that top. But yeah, they've got a nice soft hold. They're filled up really well, and they flow beautifully. So. I don't know if there's a white in the set. There is no white in the set. There is a black, but there's no white. Which is a shame, because if they work as well as this, I'd love to, to try the white. Okay, we're going to do this one. Come up a bit further. Make sure that edge is wet. Go in with our gold. And if you make sure it's a scruffy edge instead of trying to colour cover, cover smoothly, it blends better. 
Oh, I really hope that, that um, they don't let me down and they stay really shiny. Because I, I really like that. Okay, so that's what I'm doing with those. Let's put the lids back on them. I've put them on the wrong ones. There we go. And then all that's left is for me to... Oh God, holly leaves, I haven't done that. All that's left is for me to figure out these leaves. And I don't know what colour we're going to do with those. Whether I'm going to keep it green or not, I don't know. But I certainly, if they dull down those gel pens, will put some stickles over those. So, once again, let me go off and finish off all the holly leaves. And then I will have a plan for our last bit of leaves. Now, I did think... Don't be shocked, but I did think to really make this pop, I'm going to go black, I think, I reckon, or navy, one of the two. All right, folks, see in a sec. Oh, sorry about the wobble. So, um, holly leaves complete. I did find a few more that I've missed out, and I think I've, I think I've missed those. There's always something, isn't there, when you go back on a busy page like this and look that you've missed. I think I've done that. We'll see. Anyway, so I now want... Did I... I didn't do your little ticket. Oh, OK, I'll just write it down rather than um, swatch it. So we're going to use this little ticket. <laughs> Sorry eager to get it done. We're going to use felt green. And I'm hoping this will be one of those leaves that we don't have to put um, any colour on. Now those I've left, let me show you, let's come in. I've left those, but I'm actually not sure whether they'd be better as holly. And I've missed that out. See, when you go back and look, I love these gel pens, they're amazing. They dry um, a lot different though. They're a lot paler. Okay, so I think I've covered everything. <laughs> right, without smushing that, we're going to do felt green. And we're going to go from dark at the base. And as usual, I'm going to fade it out up to the top. This is a br much brighter green. Okay, I'm going to do dark at the bottom. And if it goes too dark, I can just always put some like earth green or something over it to tone it down. If it's too bright, sorry, I should say. Okay, let's do that. But I think it needs that injection of bright, fresh leaves. And, I mean, I'm sure I could have just done them in the same colour as the holly, but it's nice to have that variant, isn't it? So, I'm going to do dark at the bottom. And then we're just going to bring it out. It is a glorious colour on its own, in its own right, this felt green. So, okay, let's try that. And like I said before, they dry a bit lighter than when they first go down. But I like the the real sort of acidy green of it. Wow. What do you think? I think it looks really cool against the um, other colours. So, um, the other thing I wanted to do with you quickly is I'm, I've got, this is, believe it or not, an Arteza size 6 white gel pen and I am going to go in and we're going to give the berries a little highlight even that little one where we've got our lightest bit of um, red
Okay, so they're going to have just a little highlight like that. What else did I want to do? Oh yes, this is the Walnut Brown from before. Okay, Walnut Brown. I'm trying to shifty stuff on my desk, move you up. And I'm going to go around the... Um, I'm just going to fill in the branches on the... What's it called? Mistletoe. Just so that stands out. Could do this with a gel pen as well, I suppose, but I did do the um, stems or the, the branches of these leaves in the gold metallic, the paler one. Okay, let's just finish that. And you can see what it looks like. Try and get my thumb out of the way, Lucy. Alright, so we're going to have the brown dark walnut as part of those. Now, I'm, the more I do, the more I want the background to be black. I don't know. And then some splatters, because it is uh, some white splatters for snow. We'll see. Oh, all right, folks, we are so nearly there. All right, if I decide to do the black background, I'm just going to go ahead with it. It will just be a Posca pen um, and just do it black. And then we'll come back when I've done that. Because I think, ah, no, him. Green gold. Same as we did for these berries. Sorry, I'm so disorganised. It's the uh, green gold, same as we did for the um, mistletoe. And I'm just going to darken up the centre of that. And I might even put a little bit of raw umber in there too, around that edge. Just in some random spots. So just so it's not so yellow. All right, there we go. Right, so if I've been brave, by the time you come back, I'll have done all the green leaves and possibly a black Posca background. We shall see. See you in a sec. Okay, folks, I was brave enough. I'm really sorry, I actually thought the camera was filming, but I haven't pressed record because I'm a bit of a loon. So I outlined um, the flower, the bow and the... Um, mistletoe in white to, to pop them off the page and in fact I actually think those leaves could do with it as well but I'm going to leave it alone as it is now and over those gold um, I don't know if you can pick them up in the centre of the poinsettia and the lights are not very good in here and over the gold excuse me gel pen we I put diamond stickles and then poscoed the background and splattered it and thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. So there we have it, another Christmas, let me straighten it up for you, another Christmas, Lizzie Mary Cullen. I love it, I'm really, really happy with it. I hope you've enjoyed, it's a super long video, but happy Christmas. <laughs> anyway, no, in all seriousness, Merry Christmas to you all. I hope you have a wonderful time celebrating or not. And I will be back in between Christmas and New Year and we'll do a new video there. So please take really good care of yourselves and I'll see you very soon, my lovely friends. Bye-bye.